What's good guys, it's Ida from Afro Kicks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I thought I'll do like a little vlog, a day in the life of a sneaker customizer kind of video because I got a little bit, a little bit going on today. So it is currently 10 a.m. in the morning and I need to leave the house in about an hour and a half. I still gotta eat, um, but I was thinking to try and get a shoe, not necessarily customized, but prepared to customize later on in the day um, by taping it up and that kind of thing because I'm not trying to rush a custom right now but um, yeah so I'm gonna be heading down to London sneaker school and that is basically the place the place in London where you learn how to customize sneakers currently they're doing workshops on how to make bespoke customs like how to make Air Max ones from like complete scratch and that is the course that I actually went on back in October And um, they're also now doing a Jordan 1 course, which they're going to start, I think, in December. But um, that one's fully booked up. But there's some that you can book on too for next year. Um, but yeah, me and them, we've got a little, a little collaboration happening. I don't want to say too much. But depending if the promo video comes out before this one does, um, we're basically doing a custom workshop where you learn how to make my Basquiat inspired customs. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be filming a promo video for that. Then in the evening, like late in the evening, like 10 30 pm, I've got an interview with BBC London, basically talking about Afro Kicks and how it started and all that kind of thing. I'm not a thousand percent sure of the kind of questions that they're gonna ask me, so that's what I'm assuming it's gonna go into. Um, but yeah, that's in the evening. So by the time I finish with London Sneaker School, which hopefully I mean, I'm starting around 12, I'm hoping to be done by 3, 4 latest, come home, chill for a little bit, maybe eat some lunch or dinner, whatever I end up doing, customise a couple of pairs that I have here, then get ready for the BBC radio interview, which is going to be over the phone because of coronavirus. I would have loved to go down to the studio in Oxford Street and do it, but that's restrictions for you. So that is going to be live. Um, I will probably put a link in the description of what it is, what happened, because I'm sure you guys can listen to it after it's done already. So um, yeah, that's basically the day. It's kind of busy. It's a lot of, it's busier than usual. So I thought I'd record today because usually it's just me in my dressing gown, painting all day or like sewing, depending on what customs I have to work on or recording a YouTube video and editing it. So today I thought I will show you guys the other stuff that happens when you are a sneaker customizer. it's cold out here and my hair is blowing all over the place but thankfully the walk to the station is only five minutes then once I get off the train then another five minute walk to the London sneaker school studio so it's not too bad and then we will start doing the work I've got a bag you can see the bag a bag full of supplies well not really supplies they've got the paints by sneakers ER which I'm gonna try out for the first time today um, but yeah I bought my paint brushes some shoes to work on that kind of thing um yeah it should be good so let us see what happens
lights. Get rid of the lights. I don't know. We'll see if it makes a difference. Okay, we're good. How, how are you? I'm good. Hi, Thomas. How are you? Hey, how are you going? Good. Oh, oh gosh. Thanks. Yeah, welcome back. I'm just going over shot lists and stuff. Ooh. Very professional. So, what bits do I need to get? So, I get some jars. Yeah, so jars, um, acetone. I hope you have the acetone. Yeah, we've got loads. Loads of acetone. And I think actually when we do this properly, mm -hmm. we'll lay out um, we'll cover this. I think for now. finished this pair well the base coat of it and then I'm going to add on some black paint on top which is this paint right here and yeah just had some lunch and that's what's basically happening right now just currently on a break and then I will continue the shoot continue the promo shoot then get back home hopefully have time to work on my customs that I've got to do. Then phone call with BBC Radio London. Yo. I'm back home. It's coming to 7 p.m. I just want to eat. I just want to relax. I just want, I just want to chill. I don't want to do shoes just yet, guys. I'm sorry. I, I feel like I deserve to just chill after this long day because I've still got my radio interview at 10:30 p.m. Um, so yeah, that that's it's just it's what it is. It is what it is. Sometimes you think you can come come and torture your soul to get work done, but. I think it, it's, it's healthy to relax sometimes. I think it's healthy. I'm meant to be on the radio in about half an hour. I had a nap. I tried to, you know those naps where your brain is still awake, but your body is like going to sleep. I don't know, but it wasn't a satisfying nap at all. Oh my God, so I woke up even tired. And, um, yeah, I just want to sleep. But I gotta be alive and perky for this radio interview. Thank God it is on the phone. <laughs> so I could just sit in bed and do the interview. <laughs> We've got one of our favourite parts of the show, which is our guest. Sam, who we got tonight? Indeed we do. And like you said previously here on Radio London, you know, it's all about community. It's all about coming together. And we also love to shine a spotlight on the amazing individuals in our great capital city. And thankfully, we're absolutely spoiled for choice here because the talent we have on our streets is phenomenal. Now, tonight we're joined by North London entrepreneur Ida Kiraya, a woman who started a business to celebrate her identity and her love for trainers. Now, merge those two things together... And you've got Afro Kicks, a sneaker company, a uh, sneaker customising company. And Ida, welcome to The Late Show. Oh, thank you for having me. Hey. Thank you <laughs> for staying up late for us. So clearly, you must have some talent in designing, all right, in art in design, because not everyone can pick up a trainer, pick up an Air Force One or whatever their favourite trainer is and say, hey, do you know what? I'm going to start drawing on this. I'm going to start articulating African imprints and modern culture mm -hmm. within. No one can just do that. You must seriously have a strong foundation in arts and crafts and design. How? Where did that come from originally? Are you saying that, hey, you was an artist in school and, and that's what allowed you to thrive in this world? Or are you just saying that someone taught you on YouTube or through books? Like, how did you get that ability? 
Oh, definitely from young. Like, both my parents are artists in their own right. So my dad's a, a complete handyman. Like, he can make you a wardrobe out of just scraps of wood that's lying around. And my mum's, like, the drawer. So since young, I've been drawing things, um, drawing people in school, giving them images of themselves. Like, I feel like I was known as the artist. And you mentioned that, you know, people are surprised that you're a woman doing this and that mm. you're a woman in business. And like I said, right, my brother had a real, real love for, for collecting sneakers. And anyone that I know who's, who seems to have a love for it ha- has always been guys, right? How have you navigated that space? And how have you, you know, made sure that your voice is still heard, and that your product's still out there and that you fought for, you know, your dues? At the beginning, I had to keep putting out, like, I'm a woman that's doing this. Yeah. And uh, I feel like people have more respect. I don't know why it is, though, why when they find out that you're a woman, it's like, wow, this is so amazing. I don't know, maybe because for people, it's like collecting shoes or trainers is like a male thing. I don't know, understand what the reason for that is. But, um, yeah, putting it out there and really just, I guess being that person like a spokesperson for that when people see how far i've gone and like the different opportunities that i've had they are more like i guess more um encouraged especially the women that are in this industry as well that are more encouraged to then also do that themselves and just understand that even though you are a woman it's not like it's a hindrance in any way because my art can still match up with any other person's artwork. Talk that, so. talk. Come on, talk that. Do you know what? I love it. I'm here for that because there are so many artists, and I speak to poets more than any other creative, right? And I yeah. say, why don't we champion ourselves the way, like, and J.J. Bola is probably the originator of this. He says, champion your writers, hype your writers the way you do your rappers. But any mm-hmm. art form, any craftsmanship, deserves the right to hype themselves up. That is your license as an artist and creator because there is so much adversity when it comes to self-esteem, when it comes to people knocking down your dream, knocking down your business plan. You know, when you go to some, hey, I've got this idea, I want to do Afro kicks, and they say, what what do you mean? Like, there's JD Sports there, there's Nike London, what are you you doing? This is an American thing. But then you come through and you show through your persistence, your your, your determination to make Uh your dream come true and change people's lives because, listen, there is a strong trainer the culture in the world, right? There are conferences, yeah. and you listen. You've been flowing out. You worked with Adidas, Arsenal, yeah. EA Sports. Like, come on, like you, you've got a lot behind your chest, and I think it's very important to put your step down and put your foot down and say, "Hey, I'm here. I'm doing great work. This is me." Guys, I was sweating <laughs> right after that interview. I had to come over. I had to tie my hair up. But yeah, that basically concludes the night. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.